Truman with Park Tool Company here. Today we're going to be talking about some simple fundamentals of bike repairs. Uh, the things that are going to help you get a repair done. They're going to help you do it more efficiently. And you can take these fundamentals and use them anywhere you're working. Whether it's in a bike shop, at a nice laid out home shop, at a disorganized home shop, maybe even under the stairs on the Park Tool warehouse. Hope you learned something. Stick with us. These are going to be things that are, to a lot of you, are going to be fairly obvious. Some of you with a little bit more experience, some of them might be a little bit friendly reminders. Some of it, some of you, will be, it'll be totally new, but they're going to be fairly basic, fairly straightforward, easy to understand tips. First, you need to be able to see what you're working on. So say you're working on a crank, trying to make sure you're getting full engagement with an Allen wrench. If you're, you know, three feet away, it's going to be difficult to tell. So, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get that on your level, like in a repair stand, maybe elevate it to its max so you can get closer to its level and see exactly what's going on. Or, think about how you get your eyes down to its level, you know, in a comfortable way, whether you're using a rolling stool or you're kneeling on the ground, something like that, you wanna be comfortable and paying attention to what you're working on. Next, you're gonna to wanna to be able to see it in a different way. It needs to be well lit. Uh, a well-lit area makes things a lot easier. But if you're not in a well-lit area, it's not a perfect world, you know, using a flashlight, using a headlamp, using a portable utility light, something to get some lighting up your subject, light up what you're working on. Make it so that you can see exactly what's going on there. You might notice some details that you would never have noticed before, like a crack, scuffs, wear signatures on different items that you're repairing. Next, organization. You don't want to have a, a cluttered bench full of a whole bunch of items that don't have to do with your repair. Even items that do have to do with your repair, you want to keep them to a minimum. But basically you want to have enough space to support all the tools and parts you're going to be dealing with. So make sure you have a, a, a good amount of workspace so you can organize your tools and then also have a place to set the parts that you're taking off. And if you're installing new parts, have them already laid out there and ready to go. Another tip for your workspace on your bench, don't clutter it up with too many tools. I've heard some shops and some places say, you know, a maximum of six tools in your workspace at one time, otherwise put them back. It forces you to be cognizant and make sure, make sure that your workspace is free and open and easy to use. So when you're putting them away, you're really hammering it in your brain where you're gonna be finding these tools. If you need to, Put a repair on pause, on hold. Say you're missing a tool, say you're missing a, a part that you need to replace, or, okay, we were you know, taking this apart to diagnose it. Then you all of a sudden figure out that you need a new part. You don't wanna just leave everything where it's at unless it's in really very isolated position and nobody's gonna be messing with it and nothing can get lost. Something you're gonna to wanna to think about is making sure that everything is put away and organized or is in a specific bin. It is extremely frustrating when you lose a nut or a screw that would just finish the repair. So every little thing that you pulled off of that bike, you wanna keep that in a nice safe spot and nice and organized for when you can get back to it. Also, if you had to borrow a tool to do this repair, whether it was from a friend, a friend's friend, a parent, a bike shop, anyone, you're gonna to wanna to take that tool, clean it up, make sure it's in good condition, before you return it. Return that in better condition than you borrowed it. That's extremely important because then they are more likely to lend something to you next time. I hope these tips help you guys out. I know they've definitely helped me out and I'm still working on them and I think about them every time I do a repair. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content for Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.